Hey YouTube, got another video review for you today. Uh, this one is from a company called Channel Master, and this is their Extreme Tana. Uh, this is their Eight Bay. This is their big boy. Uh, this thing has a an 80 mile range, and it's UHF and VHF. Uh, has both of those frequencies. And uh, anyways, it is just a great antenna. I had one on my last house and I was able to pick up uh, between 40, 50 channels. And, uh, you know, I live in a rural area and, uh, you know, I was really, really impressed with it. And uh, I just wanted to uh, try my luck and see if I could uh, pick, get, get a second antenna just like this and point one going towards Knoxville and one pointing towards Chattanooga and see if I couldn't pick up uh, both cities uh, TV stations so first things first I just wanted to kind of do a quick video and uh, kind of show you um, just uh, how to get things started and for me you know I, I didn't want to put uh, a J pole mount on my roof for the antenna just because I got a new roof put on it this year and uh, I just wanted to keep the you know keep from messing the roof up and I know it probably wouldn't but I'm just kind of OCD plus I wanted to get a little extra height on the antenna so I wanted to mount it on a pole well uh, the proper way would be to get a mast and uh, but you know that's just too much money uh, I just don't have a lot of disposable income and so uh, what I decided to do was just get some uh, top post uh, for chain link fence and I've welded them together and then I've put a bolt through the center of them to uh, make them long enough but first things first before I can install that mast I wanted to go ahead and show you I went ahead and I've poured uh, well I dug a hole and uh, uh, poured the concrete in there and uh, and I took and put a piece of the pipe down into the ground about three feet so not only um well will it be really supported because it's three feet down in the ground but i took and made just a little frame right here uh and poured a little bit of concrete above the ground so it would give it a little bit of support and then right here beside this uh the pole that's in the ground i uh put i drove a um, um a grounding rod like a six or eight foot grounding rod it's a copper one right into the ground and uh you can see i used a fence post driver and i tell you i had to stop a bunch of different times and get my breath and i tell you that ground was super hard i like to never got it in there and uh anyways uh i took and uh, got these bronze uh connectors right here they're to uh, hook onto the grounding rod and then it hooks to some copper line and you can check and Google uh, the the code, what the code is, and what size line uh, that you need. But I just had this real heavy gauge um, braided line, but it, it, I mean it's it's big braid, and uh, you can see uh, it would make a really great uh, grounding wire. And so this piece here hooks onto the pole, and so uh, that is the proper way to ground it if you're not um, close to the ground the service ground that comes out of your electrical box and see mine's on the opposite end of the house and so for me to try to run a grounding wire all the way around the house that's just not you know <laughs> it's just not plausible so anyways uh that's why i put the grounding rod on this side of the house so it'd be out of sight out of mind and and uh, i know it's you know some of you are going to say, well, you should have connected connected it to the service ground. I, I, I think I take my chances uh, with it this way, and uh, it should be fine. And uh, I didn't forget that uh, you also have to ground the uh, coax cable uh, through a grounding block or, or whatever device. Uh, if you're like me, there's a power inserter that has a grounding area on it, and that's where I'm going to take and, and ground my coax cable and run the, the coax wire down the uh, down the pole. And then I'm going to hook it in the same spot right here where, let's see, 
right in here where I have this other grounding wire. I'm just going to stick the one for the coax right in there too. So I'll have it, I'll have it grounded properly. So anyways, uh, just wanted to kind of show you how to ground it and, uh, you know, uh, good luck. And, uh, I know it's going to be a lot of work trying to pound that, uh, that rod in. So, uh, anyways, uh, we're going to do a part two of this video. This just wanted to show you how to, uh, properly, uh, ground it and, you know, just putting the, the pole in the ground and, and, uh, anyways, see you guys for part two.